Good evening, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Beautiful November evening. Uh, we're looking at uh, it is November 17th. Got about uh, 13 days left. So we're going to be in December, and you know, Chris, Christmas will be up on us before we know it. This is the uh, cockle, the cockleburr field. Back when we leased it, uh, this first year we had it it was in soybeans the year before that and all came back in burrs but today there's no cockle burrs in here it's just a, a beautiful piece of grass Man. orchard grass fescue clover uh, you name it it's in here I can show you what they were on. So this is what we're leaving right here. So we're easily going to have another graze. They, they took about a third of it. They just took the top third of this whole paddock. Uh, they were on uh, about four and a half acres this morning, and uh, it's five. No, it's not. It's 4:20, and uh, the cattle are getting the other four and a half acres tonight. And then they're going to go up through that woods up on the hill tomorrow. But uh, we're coming into the second weekend of deer season. And most of the, you know, most of the flurry of deer season, it's the first three or four days. And uh, after that, even the second weekend, it's just, you don't have near the traffic and near the shooting the second weekend as you do the first weekend. Normally, normally. <laughs> It was not a good opening weekend because the wind blew so hard, but uh, I got a couple does and I uh, got some meat and uh, still have my buck tag and the boys had their chances and uh, they're still hunting this weekend. They're going to try and fill their, their buck tag and the weather's getting colder now. It's uh, got up to almost 70 on Monday. That doesn't even feel like deer season, you know, it's just too cold. I'm sorry, too warm. <laughs> too warm. You don't, you know, anytime we harvest the deer, I like to let it hang a couple days. It just, you know, just makes the, uh, the meat taste better, I think. Well, look at all the, all the mouse and vole trails in here. Look at that. There's a trail going in there. There's all kinds of hawks. We just saw a giant, what they call uh, a red-shouldered hawk when we drove in here, monster. And he was flying across the top of this field. And all these weeds, these are giant ragweeds, dried ones. A lot of, uh, a lot of good habitat here. And there's a lot of seed in that giant ragweed. There it is. So we're going to have seed for next year. I love giant ragweed. We've got bluegrass in here. There's the bluegrass. The real fine stuff down here super palatable cows already nailed that plant that was orchard grass look at the fescue beautiful stuff oh, yeah, there's some feed in here folks cows are telling us there's feed got a cow in heat over there there's about one oh, there's another older bull there's like two older bulls and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven yearling bulls. They're like, they want to have their chance too. There is a ton of good forage in here. So we're going to be, uh, you know, this is uh, <clears throat> November 17th. We won't be back here until January. 7th to the 14th somewhere in there and uh, it'll have you know ample time to have some rain on it possibly a snow or two and what we leave behind is going to be cleaned up 
cleaned off and uh, it's going to be good to them. And see this fescue, that's what is so beautiful. This is Kentucky 31 endophyte infected fescue. What I mean by that is the endophyte in it is what keeps animals from overgrazing it. It does have a toxin and if you make them graze it down real short, it can affect animals. Certain animals. Now our animals seem to be doing pretty well on it. We just got rid of the ones that couldn't handle it. Boy, that's a nice steer. Look at that. Oh, he's chunk. He's going to be a good one to eat this spring. Mm. He is real. <laughs> he's like, get out of here, you little bull calf. This is my, my patch of grass. They've really put some hair on just in the last two weeks. But, you know, we got down to low 20s over the weekend, and I'd want a coat on if it got down to low 20s, and the cattle are the same way. They, put, they, they, they did put a coat on. It's amazing how quickly they can grow hair when it gets cold. I love the sound of them. All they're doing is just grazing. If, you, if I just hush up, you can hear them. They're, they're eating that white clover. Right there's a patch of it. And just pretty much, pretty much killed out the fescue right there. Just got so darn thick. White clover can be very competitive. And so I'm glad they're going to graze that off because by the time I come back in January, it won't be anything. It'll just be brown, frosted, uh, you know, dead dormant grass or clover with very, very, very little nutritional value. Right now it's got a lot of protein. And there's plenty of fescue in here for them to get their, their energy from. Oh, they look really good. Man. Here we are the first of December and our cows are fat. I think it's going to be a decent winter, you know. It's going to be a decent winter. we got a cattle drive planned for Monday morning going to the Judy farm. We wanted to wait till kind of after deer season weekend or the second weekend of deer season. So it'll be on Monday and uh, we'll walk them down to the Judy farm. There's that Murray Gray's calf for this year. Boy, he's a beaut. You can tell he came out at Murray Gray. He's got a little shade of brown and red. More brown than red. That is a pretty walnut tree. I've got ten of them. <clears throat> Let's see. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. These are trees that the squirrels planted about seven years ago. Came in here and they were just, he was a little fella. Just barely sticking out of the ground, and I put a cage around him, and he is really taking off. He's probably 10, 12, he's at least 10 feet high now, maybe 12. He's got a really nice trunk on him, look at that. But again, the cows can't rub on it, and so he's done well. Going to have a, a walnut savanna. Shade. More nuts. It just feels good, you know, when you're getting close to December to look out and know that you're still, well, we've got 30, 40, you know, we've got probably 70, 60, 70 days of grazing left. You know, that's going to put us up there, December, January, clear up into February, middle part of February. We may make it to March. Just depends. We're, we've got a lot of cattle out here. There's 300 and 
I think there's 322 head in here. That's counting the calves, yearlings, bulls, cows, bred, you know, everything. There's, there's quite a few animals. Look how fat that girl is. My goodness. She's just a porker. <laughs> Man. There's a calf that lost his tail switch. Pretty nice little bull calf, but he, the tail switch being gone like that shows that he doesn't have the tolerance for the fescue. The fescue takes off tail switches, and so we'll, we'll clamp him. He'll, he'll be a steer. So fescue sorted him out, but most of them don't lose their tail switches anymore. I gotta end this up. I'm gonna show y'all what Isaac and Connor. That's a pretty little heifer. Yeah, you're pretty. You're just a big old brute of a bull or a steer right there. Man, he's a chunk. Now when he finishes, he's gonna be probably 1,100 pounds. People say, oh, that grass-fed genetics, you know, you got them little bitty animals. They're not little bitty. Butcher 1,100-pound animal, there's a lot of meat there. But it's all grass. That's because they're made lower to the ground. They don't have that leg on them. And I want you to burn the memory, burn into memory this animal right here. Folks, this is what you're shooting for. At 940. And look at the belly on her. It's angling down from behind her legs. It's angling down toward her, below her knees on her back leg. She's just got hardly any leg underneath her, but she's got a huge gut. And that's what you got to have. You got to have gut on your cattle, especially in all grass, or they're not going to do well. So that's just a, a heifer. Here's a cow right over here. So that heifer I just showed you, you're pretty. Look at this one. So this would be a 2015 model. Look at that. I mean, she's just a chunk. Got a calf on her. She looks like that. See, she's, she's made right. She's got that big old gut. Got a perfect udder on her. Absolutely perfect udder. You don't want to tilt the udders. See how level it is straight across? Tit, the teats are sticking straight down. I mean, she's just a beautiful animal. Anyway, I'm just going to show you this. With a load of wood, I'm going to get out of here. The boys are coming toward me. Not sure who you are. You act like you know me. You honked at me. Somebody in a stop trailer in a truck. Didn't recognize him. So we had a we had a wood cutting day the other day. And Isaac and I ran the chainsaws. And um, Connor and uh, David, he was one of the intern app applicants, they ran the splitting. They were using splitting malls. Look at that load of wood. <laughs> that truck. It's a good thing I got airbags on it because there's probably, I don't know, I bet there's 3,000 pounds of wood there. That, those are trees that were alive this spring, so they're not dead. 
my gosh, look at the deer across the field on that bean field. There's one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten right there in one clump. My goodness. Eating the beans that dropped out of the combine. That's a lot of deer in one spot. But, uh, yeah, we... We'll let that set. I'm going to throw it in a pile and just let it age over the winter. And then this will be our winter. We've got, I think I counted at least four to five more loads over there. We cut like five to six loads in one day. With those boys splitting and Isaac and I cutting. And they kept up with us. I mean, it was unbelievable how much wood those two boys split. But pretty much got all of our wood done in one single day. We were tired puppies. Were you all pretty tired at the end of the day when we split all that wood? <laughs> yeah. <fun. laughs> yeah, I enjoyed it, but I know you definitely you split it. We, it I just awesome. cut it. I know. You were a beast, man. <laughs> you just kept swinging and swinging and swinging. You had, uh, did you have Isaac's mall or did you have mine? I switched, I used both. Yeah. Um, Isaac, I your mall's a little tired. different than mine. <laughs> Works yeah. a little better. I yeah. Think. I got pretty tired using his, and then I switched to yours. Yeah. And it was a little bit wider, so I could swing it. It's a what, little like bit 10, better. Nine pounds, probably. Probably heavier than that. And ten pounds. I don't yeah. remember. It makes me tired just to pick <laughs> yours up. <laughs> my grandparents got it for me yeah. for Christmas. It works really good. <laughs> I enjoy using yeah. it. That's my favorite chore, though. I, like, of any physical work is splitting firewood. I'm gonna tell you what. Now you all flat split some wood that day. <laughs> I forgot, I lost track of how many tanks of fuel we went through, Isaac. It was at least, well, didn't you say you normally stop at three, but you went to five? I went to five. After that. Yeah. I was wore out. Yeah, it was like six, yeah. six tanks of gas a piece. Yep. Yeah. Two, and, you know, not like we each had like. Right, one. right. A lot Run, of wood. A lot of wood. <laughs> well, if you think about what's left over there, there's probably another four loads. Mm -hmm. That's a whole winter's worth of wood for us. Mm -hmm. So, got her done. Yep. One day. Well, folks, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. We just had a beautiful evening walk through the mob. Cattle are getting fat. Got some good grass for them tonight. And uh, as you can tell, they're satisfied of nothing balling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all, take care and uh, hit that subscribe button on the way out. And uh, we'll see you next time.